got the opportunity today to uh, talk to Jerry Kroll. Jerry is located up in Vancouver, British Columbia, and Jerry and his partner are in the process of resurrecting the old Corbin Sparrow, which of course became the NMG Sparrow, and, and now it's uh, over with these gentlemen in Vancouver, and we want to hear that story and hear what their plans are. So, uh, Jerry, welcome to uh, EV World. Thanks, Bill. It's great to have you here. Well, look, let's start off, first of all, um, tell us a little bit about uh, Electromechanica. Uh, that's the company that uh, you're, uh, you're doing this uh, reintroduction of the, uh, the uh, electric sparrow. Right, so it's not a reintroduction of the sparrow. What we're doing is we're building a single person electric vehicle. The okay. Sparrow is a great platform to sort out the absolute latest and greatest uh, motors, controllers, batteries, etc. But it's definitely not a reintroduction of the Sparrow. Oh, it's okay. a completely new vehicle that falls on the same, uh, uh, the same idea of having a single person vehicle. Okay, well I guess I was confused because I watched that video of you that was done by the Vancouver Sun and saw you driving what appears to be at least a, a sparrow. So apologies for the uh, uh, the confusion there. So tell us a little bit. So so what is it that you obviously it's sort of a similar platform I would gather. So tell us what uh, what's different about this. Well, uh, approximately everything. So okay. you've got a single person. You've got the two wheels in the front, the one wheel in the back. All the componentry is changed. The body will be carbon fiber. Okay. Instead of weighing 1,600 pounds, it'll weigh half that. Good. It's in design right now. All of the manufacturing uh, facilities are in place and ready to go. We anticipate having the first one on the ground uh, in November of this year. And we uh, will be uh, making deliveries starting in the spring of 2016. Okay, so the, is it... the NMG, we acquired all of the, uh, of the uh, old uh, Corbin bodies from, uh, from Corbin, one of them. Uh, right. We acquired uh, uh, about uh, 10 or 12 more from uh, Dana Myers right. over at uh, NMG in Ohio. We brought them in here. And, you know, wonderful, wonderful way of getting the, the, uh, the things sorted out and all that, <clears throat> but very difficult to manufacture, very difficult to manufacture. But it gets the point across of being a single person vehicle. Oh, okay. While our engineers are designing a state of the art, easy to manufacture commercially vehicle that people can drive and get a 2016 experience instead of a 1999 experience. Okay, great. Well, that's that, I'm excited to hear that because I was concerned that you know you were doing sort of what Dana had done and took what was left of the unfinished inventory and we're going to build build those so that's exciting to hear so so if this is going to be different then obviously Kevlar and, and uh, carbon fiber that lightens the vehicle up that's what we find in the BMW i3 um, so tell us a little bit about you know what are your plans with respect to the drivetrain and, <clears throat> and batteries and that type of thing uh, so what, uh, what we're doing is it'll have a, a range of about 140 kilometers. You'll okay. have to work out the math on that being in the United States. Yeah, that's all right. We can do it. Top speed of 140 kilometers. Okay. Uh, recharge in four hours, 12 kilowatt hour battery pack. And uh, uh, one person will have enough room in the back for four or five bags of groceries. And uh, the selling price in Canadian dollars will be $19,888. So just under $20,000. Okay. So that so yeah, and you're pretty comfortable that that's a firm number. We're not going to see any sort of escalations along as we move along. Uh, no, I think I think the uh, I think the range and the and the uh, top speed will escalate. I can guarantee you they'll both escalate. Oh, good. Okay. All right. So let's talk about um, you know your partner in this thing. How did you how how did this whole thing sort of come about? Uh, Intermechanica has been manufacturing hand built sports cars uh, to order since 1959. Uh, We're okay. located here in Vancouver, uh, proud heritage from Italy, uh, Los Angeles, and in Vancouver since the early 1980s. And if you look up Intermechanica, you'll see some of the most beautiful hand-built vehicles around. So we've been uh, working uh, hand in glove for the past four or five years now in coming up with a mass-produced vehicle that's actually good for the consumer, good for the planet, uh, and good for business, quite frankly. Because instead of building 18 hand-built cars per year, 
which is a, a lovely job. Yeah. Uh, business means we want to start producing 25,000 Wow. Useful electric vehicles a year through mass production, modern technology, and that's what we're doing. And uh, Intermechanica takes away the uh, question of, sure, you're going to build a car company, because here's a car company that's been around longer than General Motors and Tesla, um, 1959, really, over 2,400 custom-built vehicles and uh, a, a lot of customers who are extremely happy with their cars. And getting that kind of automotive heritage uh, infused into such a modern, useful, single-person electric vehicle uh, should remove all doubt from people that this is not only going to go ahead, but that the vehicle will be supported for decades to come. Okay, so why a single, why a single place vehicle? Why not a you know, two-place tandem, two-place side-by-side? Why, why the single space? Single space? Um, arithmetic. Arithmetic. We did some arithmetic and we found out that 83% of commuters drive by themselves back and forth to work. And less than less than 30 kilometers each way. So that's less than 20 miles each way. Right. So that math suggests there's 140 million people in the United States um, who drive by themselves each, each way. And this vehicle... Uh, is the perfect second vehicle for people uh, to get into and to drive back and forth without using any kind of gasoline, getting into the HOV lane all by themselves because they're 100% full, and having a seamless mission to and from work. That's really the primary mission of the vehicle. If we sell this vehicle at $20,000 to even only one-tenth of 1% 1 of that market, that's $2.8 billion in the United States okay. per year. Per it's year. A huge market. Yeah. That's why. Yeah. Okay. Uh, there have been other, you know, I, I think of, of other companies over the years that I followed out of Canada, Zen over in, uh, in the Toronto area. Um, right there in Kelowna, uh, you know, a decade ago, you had Dynasty Motor Car, the IT uh, vehicle, the low speed vehicle that they had built. Those sort of were, and I hate to use the term, but I think it's accurate, flashes in the pan. Um, they, you know, they were nice ideas. <clears throat> they just didn't go anywhere. Yes, yes. What, what, so, so what are your thoughts as to how you don't become, you know, the third strikeout of, uh, you know, building an electric car in Canada? Uh, I think my previous comment answered that. We've been around since 1959. Okay. Uh, that doesn't sound like a flash in the pan. That's older than I am and probably <laughs> twice as old as you are. Well, I'm a little older than that, but thank you. <laughs> so that means you're not a flash in the pan either, right? right? That's good to know. Okay, right. All right, so you've got a vehicle here. So where are you sourcing you know, components, your motors and batteries and, and things of that nature then? Uh, I like to use the analogy of the early Apple computers where they were using nothing, nothing black magic, but packaging it in an innovative way, packaging regular parts in an inno innovative way that really address what people want. So having a, having a vehicle that people can say, okay, I'm in it by myself. I can do pretty near 100 miles an hour. I can park three of these in a regular parking spot without any kind of complex proprietary uh, technology in the thing. That's really where the sweet spot of this technology is. Okay, uh, I assume there are sort of there are U.S. sales involved. And what are your thoughts with respect to you know sales and distribution and service? Uh, one thing that we like is being a single person vehicle with the uh, steering wheel right in the middle. Is we can sell these vehicles to England, Australia, and Japan without moving the steering wheel to either side. Oh, that's a good point. Yeah, <laughs> there's so many intuitive answers to why this platform is the answer today. Uh, and even, you know, if you would have invented a cell phone in the 1960s, it could have been better than the iPhone 6. It wouldn't have gone anywhere because the infrastructure wasn't there. Right. Today's person who looks at the single person electric vehicle driving around, a light bulb goes off instantly. They understand small vehicles because they've seen smart cars driving around for five or six years successfully. 
They get that. Right. And they get electric vehicles now because everybody doesn't just want a Tesla. Everybody lusts after a Tesla. <laughs> yeah. Except Absolutely. for the $135,000 price. Right. If they could have all the performance and all the joy and all the uh, good feeling of driving a clean electric vehicle at a sixth of the price, that's kind of what people are looking at. So right. I don't think it's a case so much of the electric vehicle and this single-seater being optimal. I think what it is, it's a case of the consumer understanding how it can help them have a better experience in their day-to-day -day commute and even in their day-to-day -day life. Okay. How, how dependent are you guys on that $5,000 uh, uh, incentive that uh, British Columbia is offering on the, on the purchase of these vehicles? Because that brings the price down to below you know, $15,000 then. Yeah, I think I think everything helps. Everything helps, and uh, British Columbia isn't the only place that, that has incentives like that. Those are global. Those are absolutely everywhere. So everything helps, and we're also uh, working with for our delivery in the spring of 2016. We'll be working with financial institutions, which will be offering uh, uh, great rates of financing. So we haven't got anything that we can announce yet. But there's a lot of people who said uh, in the financial industries, uh, businesses that we've talked to here, that our vehicle, the electric mechanical vehicles, slot in perfectly with their values, and they're going to find ways of providing financing that allows people to get into these vehicles very easily, with or without the $5,000 clean energy vehicle uh, rebate. But $5,000 on a $20,000 dollar vehicle that's 25 percent that's a pretty pretty sweet bonus right now so how, how does this work then do they i go in and, and buy a vehicle and then i file some paperwork and they send me a uh, this the the the, uh, the province sends me a check for five thousand dollars or do i oh, get that off it's different dealer? it's different in every uh in every jurisdiction okay. i believe that in california you have to file papers and then you get your money returned to you by the government there in some places like British Columbia, it just comes right off the invoice. Oh, okay. And then the company uh, handles all the paperwork. That's pretty convenient. But there are some jurisdictions outside of British right. Columbia where you as the buyer, you know, you pay your, your $20,000, you take the receipt, you file it with a form, and then presto, within uh, a year, you get your $5,000 back. Right. Now, are you any, getting any kind of uh, assistance or encouragement from uh, BC Hydro? I mean, this would seem like a real natural for them. You know, one of the things we've heard recently is that depending on where I live in the United States, my electric car may be dirtier than my gasoline car, right? Um, but in the case of uh, British Columbia, most of your power is coming from hydro, which makes it extraordinarily, uh, you know, low emission or no emission yeah. in this case. So... Um, well, let me ask you a question. Those people that you just referred to who say that your electric car is dirtier than a gasoline car, you don't really believe that, do you? Of course not. I don't believe that. It's rubbish. So let's not even talk about that. Yeah. Even if you had a coal-fired power plant supplying 10,000 vehicles, that is a huge benefit versus having 10,000 gasoline vehicles idling along in traffic. It's not even close. So what you have is either uninformed people or you have people who have got a, uh, uh, an agenda, an oil right. industry agenda. Well, so I, yeah, not even I, close. Yeah, these are coming out of supposedly acad you know, academics out of, I think, North Carolina and some other places like that. So, no, I mean, that's one of the, one of the points that, uh, you know, with the, with the case of a coal-fired power plant, that's not something you can shut down on a whim. You know, that thing's going to be generating power regardless. Uh, so let's use that power, and that makes that plant a tad more efficient. But we will go. I don't want to. I don't want to get sidetracked into that debate. Yeah, no. Our our job is to shut those things down too. Like I always yeah. say, there's only one way you can make a gallon of gas, but there's a whole bunch of different ways you can make electricity, and most of them are sustainable. So right. and, hydro and, is a great way. Wind, solar, and all that. Um, I think the utilities are pretty interested in supporting it. But there's no direct connection there because I believe that what you're going to get is a lot of people who will have independent solar collectors on their homes or on their apartment buildings. You'll have 10, 20, or 30 kilowatt hour battery packs in your garage. 
so that when you plug in a car, you're not getting a 110 volt and you're not getting a 220 volt charge that'll take four or eight hours. You can literally do a 400 volt DC to DC dump from your battery directly into your car and be out of there within 20 minutes. I think that's where it's going to be going. And not only is it power that you've generated yourself, it's also power that's off the grid. So the power never goes down unless your own house has a problem. Right. Now, coming back to the design of the vehicle, um, because this is a, is, a, is a new design from what I'm hearing you say, are there any uh, certification issues, any engineering crash things that you've got to do with this vehicle? Crash things? Well, you know, crash testing <laughs> and, you know. That's a technical term, yeah. Uh, so these days... Uh, they can perform the crash thing simulation on computers right. and evaluate the uh, composites that are used uh, during the design phase. So that certain areas are, are enhanced structurally, other parts are optimized. So that's all done on computers these days quite easily. And at a certain point in time, you pick a couple of cars uh, apart after you've done several hundred and you actually physically crash them. But uh, the, the composites, the materials that they're using these days are just miraculous compared to the early uh, fiberglass right. bodies that you were, even, even compared to aluminum, things like that. Uh, there's, no, there's no mistaking why BMW's i3 is composite. It's just a wonderful material to work with, and it's obviously the future. And uh, uh, when you scale that down from a 2 plus 2 or 4 seat i3 down to the essence of a vehicle that weighs 800 pounds, and now you can get in this thing and commute back and forth to work. I'm here to tell you that even at 1,275 pounds, a single seater with a 20 kilowatt hour or 20 kilowatt power motor in it right. is a thrill to drive, in line with what it feels like to drive a single seater race car. Well, I think people are going to enjoy that. Now, when, so when do we get to actually see? Because I haven't seen any images. All I Obviously, it was assuming what we were doing was seeing a sparrow here. So when do we yes. get to see what, uh, and, and, and okay, and what are we calling this thing if it's not the sparrow then? Well, right now, the code name for electromechanical vehicles is EMV. EMV, okay. And the code name for the new car is 17. 17, okay. Yeah. So, Our plan is to unveil the vehicle around uh, mid-November. Okay. And at that point in time, we'll have the actual... Uh, um, Product or the actual production name of the vehicle out there as well, too. And uh, there's images uh, of it out. Uh, I guess last Friday, uh, the Vancouver Sun did another article uh, on uh, the company and on the car, on the pre-production car, which was the NMG Sparrow uh, vehicles that we're designing out the, uh, the drive system on. Right. Uh, so there are some images out there right now. Right. So that's more or less the Buell then that you're using. Will the vehicle look anything significantly different from what we're seeing in the Sparrow? Yes. Okay. In a word, <laughs> in a word the NMG Sparrow vehicle is stunning to drive around in. People stop you. They run into the street, now right. risking life and limb to ask you where, where you got it and all that. Right. The new vehicle... Uh, we've got a group of people who are, are coming up, trying to come up with uh, uh, adjectives for it. They haven't found any yet. Oh, good. Is that amazing? Yeah, that is very cool. All right, so Target, when are you, you're going to start sort of doing a pre-order thing? Send us five thousand dollars to get a, you know, to get your name on the, the list, <laughs> or, or, or you know, taking your I kid like from the Tesla. Cut of your jib. Five thousand dollars is good. No, our our website is smallev.com. Okay. Uh, smallev.com, and what we're offering people right now is the opportunity to put their name on a, uh, a test drive list. All right. So in mid-November, we'll be calling people up to come to Vancouver and take a test drive in the new car and determine whether or not they want to put a $2,000 deposit on one oh, for delivery in 2016. Okay. So that's what we'll be doing. There is an opportunity. We already have some people who have put a $2,000 deposit without driving, so they're first in line to take delivery in 2016. Uh, it's a refundable $2,000 deposit, so if they don't like the vehicle or if their situation changes, they can get their money back. Right. So that's our, our production uh, uh, scale-up that we have right now. So you can just go to the website and say, I'd like to have a test drive, and you're on the list. Right. And you can also get on the website and say, I'd like to put a $2,000 refundable deposit on because I really want this car. I want to be moved up the line and get that. And while we're doing that, I think one of the most significant things to happen 
to electric vehicles in the last 10 years was the initial public offering of Tesla Motors. Significant. Their market cap is in excess of $40 billion yeah. a year yeah. with one vehicle one in model. production. Yeah. One model. Yeah. Um, our company, Electromechanica, is planning uh, to go public. And so right now we're doing our round one financing here with this car company being included, which has been around since 1959. So it's not a startup. Right. But with that and the EMV 17, that's what we're planning on going public. And that'll be... Uh, targeted for sometime in 2017. Okay. So that makes the whole company exciting versus just the car being exciting. Right, right. Very good. Great. Well, look, we're going to keep a uh, keep an eye on you and Please do. Uh, and uh, see what uh, what happens. Hopefully, uh, we'll see um, uh, a lot of pre-orders, and uh, we wish you guys the uh, same success that uh, Elon and the gang at at Tesla have had so yeah and what are you doing in mid-November what am I doing uh maybe I might be at the Havana Expo in Cuba <laughs> oh yeah you guys are allowed to go over there well I assure you that the vehicles you'll find in Vancouver in mid-November will be uh well advanced over what you see in Havana oh, probably and so <laughs> you'll probably get more done by being in Vancouver in mid-November and watching our our grand opening here than you will in Havana with uh, 1950s Chevys and cigars. Oh, well, I'm not going there for that. I have another, a, a grander, more audacious plan in mind. <laughs> I can't imagine. <laughs> no, and I'm not planning on taking over Cuba, but uh, no. <laughs> anyway, great. Thank you so much, uh, Jerry. Very much appreciate it. Thank you. Uh, it's a pleasure talking to you. I'm excited. There's a lot of things that are in the pipeline now uh, that are that are uh, going to be released over the coming months. Uh, we'll keep you posted. Uh, stay tuned to the smallev.com website. And as we come up with different things, they will be released uh, online there. And uh, by mid-November uh, of this year, we should see one of the most exciting vehicle technologies ever introduced. All right. That sounds great. Good. Thank right. you. Have a great Thanks, one. Buddy.